What's going on everyone? This is Dustin Stelzer with Electrician U and today we have a pretty cool episode. We're going to talk about all the different types of electrical test equipment that you should know how to use as an electrician. So first on the list is you need a basic 600 volt, uh, I call it a jaw type multimeter. Now the reason for that is you don't necessarily need a meter that does 13 different functions. And a lot of bench type multimeters where you know it's got like a kind of like this where you set it up and it's got all these different features. This is actually a mega bad example, but there are a lot of different uh, different testers out there that are called desktop or benchtop testers. Um, they have way too many functions and features on them that you don't use most of the time. So you really just want to have something that's like nice and compact, fits in your back pocket. Um, you whip it out and it's got volts, amps, and resistance. And resistance usually does continuity as well. But beyond those functions, you really don't need much more for your average multimeter that you're going to carry around with you and use more often than anything else. So there's two different models. Um, there's one that I like more than the other. I'm kind of picky on like where the knob is in relation to the screen. I find that the screen gets covered a lot by your hands on this one, but this one it doesn't. Um, just real ergonomic. And I would choose a multimeter that has a slot in it that can hold at least one lead. That way when you're taking measurements, you can see your screen and use both hands because what ends up happening a lot is if you don't have that, then you just have to like move the thing down and or hang and use this thing. It just looks really stupid and it's not functional. So uh, I would definitely choose one like this is the T5600 uh, from Fluke. This is the CL360 from Klein. They both have the same kind of functionality. Klein's has two spots so you can actually put both leads or either lead on them. I don't know anybody that would use it like this. Um, but you get the idea, basic multimeter. Not talking about industrial strength crazy, you know, 700 features, just a basic multimeter. So that's number one. <clears throat> Today's episode is brought to you by Rogers Electric. They'll blow your mind. For real, I have gotten to know Rogers for quite a while now. I've got to go out to the field and work with their guys. I've gotten to meet their corporate office. Um, so I know a little bit about what they do and how they do it. They seem to place um, quality and education very, very highly. Uh, they specialize in commercial service work. They do construction as well, but there's quite a bit that they do. Um, if any of you are interested at all in seeing what Rogers is about, there is a link in the description below. So the next piece of test equipment that I'm going to talk about is a clamp-on ammeter. Now what's important about the clamp-on is sometimes you have really large diameter wires that you have to fit and one of these basic multimeters, say you've got like 500 MCM, you know, like thick wire. Well you can't, you know, you can't even fit that over my finger, let alone something that's like three of my finger put together. So this is just kind of used for like service techs out in the field testing standard number 12, 20 amp circuits, things like that. Something like this is what you would use around service conductors, feeders, really large wires. So it's really important to have one of these. If you have one of the other ones, that's cool, but you should also have a clamp-on ammeter. Now, a lot of people will choose to get this because it has the multimeter functions as well and you only have to buy one tester to do that, which is fine. Um, I ended up buying this tester and not being happy with the fact that I can't put one of the leads on and use it, you know, while holding it. I have to clamp this thing on somewhere, even if it's just to like a piece of metal to get the thing to hang in front of me so I can use both the leads with both hands. It's the only kind of flaw that I see in the design. Um, but either way, you need to have a clamp on and meter. You're going to use the heck out of this when you're in panels. Um, and then you need to have a regular multimeter for times when you're not dealing with large wire. But again, you could just get this and this would suffice. Okay, so number three on my list of uh, electrical testers that I think an electrician should have is a standard 
small voltage tester. This is only voltage, it's not gonna test amperage, it's not a multimeter, so it doesn't have multiple functions. All it has on here are little LED displays for ranges. So it'll give you a 12 volt range, 24 volt range, uh, 120 volt, 240 volts. So um, this particular one only goes up to 240 volts. Uh, but I like it because it can stick in your pocket. It's got this little like clip on it, clips right in your pocket. Um, I also like that you can stick one of the leads in it and again, use it in both hands and actually have the readings in one of your hands while you're using it. You don't have to leave it hang like some of these stupid ones that are out there. Um, but it's also just a tester that throughout the day, if you got multiple service calls or whatever, you just drop this thing in your pocket and you got it with you all day. If you run into something and you're like, you happen to walk into a job and somebody's like, hey, will you check this out really quick? Yeah, pop this thing out. Like, me an electrician, <laughs> this is stupid, but I carry this little shit around everywhere that I go because you always end up being somewhere where somebody's like, oh, you're an electrician, come and look at this. And it's like, dude, I don't have any shit on me, you know? So I just kind of like this because it's like a nerd thing. Again, uh, I think every electrician should have one of these just because it's like a miniature little lifesaver. All right, so number four is a very contentious issue. This is called a tick tracer, ticker, um, but it, essentially just emits a sound. You turn it on, go next to a hot wire, and it goes beep, 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 and it lets you know that the wire's hot. Now, I do not like telling people to use this because this is not a meter. This doesn't actually tell you anything that's going on in a circuit. All it does is beep at you. And when you've got multiple wires in a box, it could just beep at you and you think you're on this wire, but you're actually picking up from this wire, and then you go to stick your hand in and get shocked. So, this is never to be used as a multimeter or as a meter in general. This doesn't tell you anything about the circuit. I always say this is only for the presence of power. So for example, say you're up on a lift somewhere and you've got a J box that you just opened up and you got three hot wires that are sticking up there. You got a red, a blue, and a black. And you're trying to figure out which circuit is which. So you could have your helper or whoever you're working with go down the electrical room and flip a breaker and all this thing, sudden this thing comes on or all of a sudden it goes off. You can identify whether or not power is present and then pull your multimeter out once you think you've found the right circuit and test and make sure that you've got voltage from thing to thing. The problem with these is a lot of times batteries go dead or they get knocked around a lot and sometimes they don't read right. These are just very unreliable for an electrician to use. Um, and to actually say you know what's going on in a circuit. Um, again, this is just to, to see if the presence of power is there or not. But I would always, always, always double check with a multimeter. Number five on the list is a plug tester, and more specifically, a GFCI plug tester. This is a no-brainer. Every electrician at all, all of them, every one of them, needs to have one of these. This allows you to test a plug. It will tell you if something is wired backwards, if you have wires uh, crossed, if you have things, uh, like if you have an open neutral, open ground, um, open hot, it tells you a lot about how a plug is wired. You will use these on trim outs. Um, you'll use it to figure out, you know, you have somebody that just went through and did a whole bunch of plugs, you'll turn the breaker on and you think everything's good and you're about to leave and you go in and just hot check everything. You're like, oh crap, this one was wired wrong. Okay, that's good to know. So it's a way for you to diagnose a problem with a plug circuit without having to open the box and pull the plug out and look at everything. It just tells you with these lights. So there's different combinations of lights on here. You know, two yellows uh, lets you know that like everything was wired correctly. And if you have like uh, this, red right here and this yellow right here. It means that the hot and the ground is reversed. There's even a nice little display on the front that lets you know what all the little light things mean. So aside from just being able to diagnose what is wrong with you know, how a plug was wired, you can use this thing the same way that you would use one of these. Um, these are more for like open wires. If you got a wire hanging, you can test it. You can't really do that with this. So if you're working with plugs specifically and you're trying to figure out which circuit's which, when these lights turn off, you know that you just turned the right breaker off. And when they turn on, you know you turn the right breaker on. So um, just a really handy tool all around to have. Now the coolest part, the reason that I said that the GFI is probably a better idea for you to have is say, say you wanna know on a GFI circuit, you've got 10 outlets on this circuit, 10 receptacles. 
first one's obviously your GFCI device, but all the rest of them downstream are just normal duplex receptacles. So you can go to the very last duplex receptacle or any of them in between and plug this in and hit this button. And what it does is it connects the ground and the neutral together inside of here and trips that GFI. Um, so it's a way for you to test and make sure whether the whole GFCI circuit that you just put in works. Um, also to test whether or not your GFCIs are bad. If you have a, uh, an old GFCI receptacle in a wall, you can stick this in and try to trip it. And if it doesn't trip, you know that that GFCI is bad. So all around, dude, this is a dead ringer. You should have one of these. And if you're an electrician, get the GFCI one. I mean, come on, man. The next piece of test equipment that I think every electrician should have is a low voltage network toner. So how this guy works. This is low voltage, so you have to keep in mind not to put this on a live 120 volt circuit. This is for a low voltage environment. If you send 120 volts through this thing, you're gonna blow it. So with power off, you would wanna use one of these. There is a transmitter and a receiver. We just call the receiver the wand. So you would hook this up, say you have a wire and you're trying to figure out which direction that wire goes and how it's run. Um, what I would do is take a, the black and white conductor, you open a plug up, you get a black and a white, you hook one of these to the white, one of these to the black, and then you push this button and through the wall, it'll sit and squeal at you when, when it's over the wire. So it's a way for you to trace through a wall and figure out what path that wire is taking. Very, very handy. Now this can be a little bit misleading sometimes depending on how the place was wired. If you have a whole bunch of circuits that are tied together, like they all the, the neutrals throughout the whole house because it was wired in the 60s and they just did things that way, you're gonna have a hell of a time, a hell of a time using this because what's gonna happen is it's gonna send, say this is on the black wire, it's gonna send a signal out the black wire and it's gonna try to come back on the white wire but whoever wired the place put all the white wires in the whole entire house together so you're sending signals out everywhere so it'll just send like a really distorted weak signal so you may really have to isolate the one specific piece of wire that you are trying to trace sometimes that's impossible but these things are a lifesaver when you are like which wire is this where does this wire go why can't i find this well hook this on go through the wall and see if you can trace out where it goes all right so number seven for toys to have as an electrician is a circuit tracer so there's a lot of different ones of these that are out there. This is kind of a fairly expensive one uh, made by Greenlee, but this is called a circuit seeker. And what this will do is you, you can uh, find shorts with this, find out where there's a problem in a circuit. You could also hook this up, plug it into a plug. It will send a tone all the way through and you can go up to a panel and figure out which panel your wire is in. If you got like five panels next to each other, um, you can also identify which exact breaker is hooked up to this. So it comes with a couple different kinds of leads. So you don't just have to have this plug on it. it this is only for obviously hooking into plugs, but they do make alligator clamps for them. So you could put one of each one of these in, clamp onto actual wires, use it the exact same way. The really cool thing about circuit tracers is if you don't have a circuit tracer, say you're working up on a lift and you're in a junction box and you've got three circuits up in that junction box. How do you, up on that lift, know which breaker, say your breakers aren't labeled, for example. You go back to a panel and like the whole thing's unlabeled and you're like, holy shit, okay, how am I gonna figure out which circuit either one of those is? I would have to shut off one breaker, go walk all the way out there, get back up on my lift, test it, that's not it, get back down off the lift, go back over, shut off one more breaker and you have to keep doing that. It would take you hours to do. And if you don't have a helper or somebody with you that can be back there phoning you and saying, okay, I'm shutting this one off, shutting this one on, shutting this one off, that's the quick way to do it. But when you're by yourself, this thing's really handy because you can just leave this up into your, in your junction box hooked up to a wire. This thing is sending a tone down the wire. You can go get down off your lift, go over to the electrical room and just use this wand and go right up to the panel and figure out, you know, there's a whole bunch of breakers here. You can go up to that breaker and it'll start beeping at you once you've found the right one. So this is a super, super handy thing to have. All right, number eight on our list is called the Megger. Now Megger's actually a brand, but it's kind of a universally used term throughout the industry for mega ohm meter. This is a high resistance tester. 
uh, otherwise known as an insulation tester. So an average multimeter is going to do resistance up to about a thousand ohms. But what happens when you get above a thousand ohms? Say you have something that is really, really high, uh, high resistance. Or if you're trying to test whether or not the sheathing around a piece of wire has been nicked, or if there's any kind of like leakage current getting out, um, then you need something that is able to test a lot higher resistances. So a megger is a tool that most of the time helpers aren't gonna use, apprentices aren't gonna use. Um, for the simple fact of using this, you can get hurt. This thing can send up to a thousand volts, a signal, and it's at a really low current, so it's kind of like getting shocked by like an electric fence. Uh, if any of you country bumpkins like me ever grab onto an electric fence, you know what I'm talking about. Um, so anyways, this thing is really handy. It does a few different features. It actually does a lot of features, um, a lot more than an, an average electrician needs, really. But for electricians out in the field, really what you're going to be doing with this is, say you've got an underground set of wires and every once in a while this breaker just keeps tripping and you've gone and tested the breaker there's nothing wrong with the breaker it works exactly how it should be um, then you have gone over and you've tested your wires to see if there's a short now if a hot and a neutral are touching each other underground somewhere you should be able to put your meter on the hot and the neutral and whoops what else if i turn the meter on and it'll tone out. That lets you know like, oh shit, there's a short somewhere. Those two wires should never be touching. So there's a problem. Well, if you have an underground situation and the wires are not exactly touching, but the sheathing around the wires is compromised. It's nicked, gouged, something like that. And you have two wires right next to each other. There is a situation where with moisture or temperature rise or fall, you could have a short that is a momentary short in between those conductors. So when that pipe fills up with water, now you have a way for current to flow. And uh, the way that you would find this with a megger is you send a high voltage current through those wires. And for those of you that don't know, the higher the voltage that you have, the more uh, current can travel through air. It can actually traverse like, an air gap. So this is a really handy thing to find like nicks underground and to troubleshoot nuisance tripping and see the validity of the insulation of a piece of wire. Um, you can also use one of these to test uh, motor windings or transformer windings. So you can hook this thing up and do the same thing. You do an insulation test on all of them, you do a continuity test on all of them, and you can figure out whether or not the windings on a motor or a transformer are good or if they're bad because the same thing could be happening. You may not have a direct short going on inside of a motor, but you, have, you may have had so much heat over so long um, and so much current going through this wire that it has caused the insulation to start breaking down. And the only way for you to know that because of the amount of resistance, the amount of turns that there are inside of that motor winding is to put a megger on it. And you'll be able to see differences between each phase and differences to ground. And it's a, just a, a good tool other than just scratching your head and being like, well, guess the motor's bad. You know, it's telling you exactly what's going on in the circuit. So um, you can also just use this for continuity. I mean, there's, there's regular continuity setting just like you would use a, a normal continuity tester on it. So um, the Megger is just a little bit more advanced tool for somebody that's been doing this a while and that really knows um, how and when to use it. Okay, so the next thing that I'm gonna talk about, one of my favorite tools to have as an electrician is the line locator. So the line locator really has two components. There's the uh, transmitter and the receiver. Notice a pattern here, a lot of these are they send a signal out and somehow you're receiving that signal wirelessly. Um, so with this, there's a couple more components with it and I'll show you guys a video of how to use this out in the field, but essentially this transmitter sends out a signal and this thing picks it up. The cool thing, the reason you would use a line locator is say that you have a parking lot or a situation where you've got a lot of conduits underground and wires underground. And for some reason, there's a couple of these lights that aren't working. You've tried everything that you can possibly think of to get power to these poles and they're still not working. You've checked the lamps, you've checked the ballast, you've checked for fuses, and it just seems to you like maybe this wire's broken underground somewhere. Or maybe this is going to a J box somewhere out in the grass, who knows? And then, you know, like it's just over time, the weather, the moisture has caused these wires to just come apart. So it's a good thing to be able to have a tester that you can 
penetrate the ground deeply and follow, just like you would do with this low voltage tester. Being that it's low voltage though, you can only penetrate so far. Like behind this wood, it would stop working. So you need something that's a little bit deeper that'll go like four feet underground and still trace a wire. Now these things are cool as hell. Um, I've seen people use them up to a quarter mile away and still have a complete accuracy. But basically what this does is you hook this to ground with one lead, you drive the stake into the ground, clamp one of the leads on this. The other lead you hook up to the power supply that's inside the case. And then you take this thing, some guys put headphones in and hook them into the top, some don't. Then you turn your power control knobs so that they're kind of sending and receiving the same strength of signal. Um, and then you just walk around and you listen. And on the ground, some of these are tuned to uh, be silent. And then right when you get above the wire, they make a noise, they tone at you. So it's really easy to trace out that way. Some of them are inverse though. Some of them have like some noise all the way around and a little bit of a tone when you're not on the wire. And when you get on the wire, they go completely dead silent. And then once you move over, the same thing, it goes back to like a noisy tone. Um, so you just gotta know which one that you've got, but it's essentially the same feature. It lets you find wires underground. And it'll even, if you know what you're doing and you know how to follow like a dead on signal, and then all of a sudden it starts kind of getting muddy a little bit and you're like, oh shit, I think I just lost it. And, but you keep going a few more feet and then you pick it back up again. There's a high likelihood that there's a break or a short or something going on under the ground right there. So these things are super accurate and if you know how to use them, they are lifesavers. So the next piece of equipment that I think every electrician should have is some sort of low voltage cable tester. So this one will actually do coax cable and it'll do ethernet. Um, so if you're running coax and you're crimping your own ends on, or if you're uh, running ethernet, you know, cat five, cat six, and you're crimping your own RJ45 ends on, this is a great thing. It's got a transmitter, it's got a receiver, notice the pattern. Um, so it sends a signal and receives a signal. So what I like about these is this specific one has all the pinouts printed on it. So it's kind of hard to screw up what order you need to put all of these wires in. Um, it has the A configuration, it has the B configuration. So what this does is say that we just ran a, a whole bunch of CAT6 and we just crimped these new ends on. You can stick this in one end and then stick this all the way on the other side of the building into it. So imagine this is 500 feet long and in completely different rooms. You would be able to send a signal from one, receive it, and on the receiving end, there's all these little LEDs and it shows you uh, if it's receiving signal on each one and if it's not, you can identify whether or not there's a problem. So you can see if you messed up your crimps and it's easy to do. If you don't do a whole lot of low voltage, you only do it every once in a while. Um, sometimes you're gonna come across something that you mixed up two of the wires or even with co uh, coax, you could have shorted out that cable. You could have nicked the shielding um, so it also does coax. It sends a signal, lets you know if there's a short, if there's a reversal, or if everything's good. So that is my full list of all of the test equipment that I think every electrician should know how to use. Not saying every electrician needs to have on their truck with them, but that is the essentials. I think if you know how to use all of those things, you can pretty much troubleshoot anything you're gonna come across. Now there's a lot of other like really high-end test equipment. Um, that's kind of stuff that I think a company is going to have and they're going to issue to somebody and let them use it if there's a very specific situation that they would want to use it. But these are all the things that I think the average electrician needs to know how to operate. So let me know if you guys use any other kind of test equipment that I'm not aware of. Uh, if there's any other brands of these things that y'all prefer and why, leave some comments below. Uh, kind of let me know what y'all use and let me know if I missed anything too because uh, if there's something that I missed I would love to just update this video and add stuff but I think that this is pretty much the gist of it so thank you guys so much for watching I love y'all and I will see you in the next episode